ब्रह्मांड पुराणा पार्ट फोर ललिता महात्म्या चैप्टर ट्वेंटी फोर सेवेन जनरल्स बिगिनिंग विथ बलाहका किल्ड हाई ग्रीवा कॉन्टिन्यूड वेन दे वेर किल्ड द लॉर्ड ऑफ शून्य का बिकेम ब्लाइंड विथ फ्यूरी Having a deep shy, he spoke thus to Kutilaksha, with his mind agitated on account of his eagerness for war. O gentle commander in chief, sorrow has befallen us. Karanka and other generals who had been displaying the exploits of their arms and dispelling the pride of devas through the magical. power of serpini have been struck down by the magical power of that sinful deity we have seven generals beginning with balahaka send them to the battlefield as they have formidable power of arms along with them dispatch 30 akshohinis they were they are devoted to the application of maya they will smash and shatter the army of lalita oh they will bring victory to us they will surely come back to me they are born of kikasha the seven brothers chief of whom is balahaka possess vehement valor and power of exploits they are always victorious certainly they will attain victory in the battlefield on being told thus by the demon bhanda kutilaksha summoned the seven efficient and proud generals the chief of whom was balahaka they were balahaka suchi mukha phala mukha vikarna vikatanana karalaksha and karataka all these seven were vigorous and mighty after bowing down to bhandasura the seven brothers the sons of kikasha went out of the city they were extremely enthusiastic about the war they were assisted and protected by one another the chiefs and the soldiers in the army consisting of 30 akshohinis followed them then scraping the region of clouds through the numerous banners and flags the army was war like and terrible stamping with their feet they the soldiers pressed down the earth through the columns of dust particles they drank up every drop of ocean through the sounds beating of the different war drums such as bheri nishanas tampottas panavas and anakas they rendered the entire universe full of qualities of the ether with sound at every step taking the army consisting of 30 akshohinis the extremely proud sons of kikasha started as though to enter vishwa the lord that is to their death they were furious and hence they became red in their face their armors were brightly illuminated by the sun's disk their weapons and ornaments glittered their hairs were tied up above heads thus the generals moved ahead formerly these hafty demons had been dispatched to suppress the seven worlds by the great demon bhanda desirous of conquering the entire universe having observed their great strength through that subjugation of the seven worlds they were now sent by that wicked natured daitya desirous of conquering the army of lalita they hastened to the battle ground waving weapons in their hands with great fury they rushed towards the army of shaktis with their loud shouts and shrieks they made the ten directions echo loudly 
the proud Daityas then went to the place where the army of goddess was present. The army of goddess Lalita, too, was standing in readiness. It was dreadful on account of weapons. The soldiers turned towards the enemies, displaying their ruthlessness by knitting their eyebrows. Thousands of Shaktis joined the forces of Lalita. Some had nooses, some iron clubs, other discuses, maces, sharp-edged javelins, etc. Others had bows. These fierce Shaktis appeared to drink the ocean of Daityas. The Danavas threatened and taunted Shaktis thus and fought with them. Come on, come on, O wicked sinful base woman! By adopting Maya tricks, you delude only stupid fellows. We shall send you all today to the abode of the God of Death by means of our highly terrific arrows resembling hissing serpents. A certain Shakti cut the neck of a leading Daitya by hitting with a sharp-edged spear. The blood gushing out from his neck flowed upwards. Numerous vultures hovered over it in a circle and perched upon it. The luster of the umbrella of the god of death was enhanced by them. A certain demon discharged a javelin in the course of the battle. A certain Shakti cut off his javelin with an arrow. The same arrow killed him too. A certain Shakti riding on an elephant trained her elephant in the art of butting against mounds on the broad, che broad chest of a wicked Daitya. A certain Shakti suddenly struck in its forehead the elephant on which a soldier of the enemy was seated. She struck it with a sword and gave it the pleasure of heaven, that is, killed it. With a discus hurled by means of her hand, a certain Shakti broke the bow of a certain Asura into two and thereby made two replicas of her eyebrows. Another Shakti exterminated the enemies with sharp arrows and granted pleasure to her dagger in her own Romali, a line of hair on the abdomen above the navel. That is, the dagger was given rest. With a blow of her mess, certain Shakti smashed the chariot wheel of her enemy and granted pleasure to her buttocks with it, that is, scratched it with it. With her fierce sword, a certain Shakti cut off the pole of the chariot of a lordly Danava and enhanced the pleasure of the earth. The army of Shaktis infiltrated into the army of Daityas and the army of Daityas infiltrated into the army of Shaktis. The close intermingling of Shaktis and the demons was like that of water and milk. During the time of fighting, it confused both of them. When the trunks and the tusks of the mad elephants of the Daityas were cut off by the swords of Shaktis, they appeared like huge boars. Thus a fight ensued, which was dreadful even to the heroes. Cowards could not even remember about it within themselves. It was terrific even to terrible men. It was impassable due to the incessant exchange of weapons. Balahaka, mounted on a huge vulture named Samharagupta, Formerly it had risen out of fire. Its beak and other limbs were as sharp as the thunderbolt. Its staff-like shanks could be compared to the baton of Kala, god of death. It was of fierce valor and exploit. It was of gray color like smoke. The movement of its wings was very dreadful. After riding on this vulture, the Hofti Daitya fought in various ways. 
when it stretched its wings they extended to half a crosa. It stood thus shrieking and howling with terrible sounds. Opening its beak that appeared like a fire pit, it devoured soldiers in the army. Samharagupta, the huge vulture of cruel eyes, bore Balahaka, who kept the bow well drawn in the course of the battle. Seated on the back of vulture, with his body moving up and down, Balahaka appeared like the Balahaka cloud at the time of dissolution clinging to a kuta mountain with wings. The leading daitya, Shuchimukha, mounted on his vehicle crow. The root of its wings was as, as sharp, hard as needle. Riding on this, he fought a hard battle. It was elated and intoxicated. With its long beak, it resembled the peak of a mountain. It was very dreadful with its stuff-like shanks having the size of the stuff of the god of death. It was on a par with the cloud Pushkaravartaka. Its complexion was similar to the color of mud. Its wings extended up to a crosha. This crow of harsh cry mounted by Suchi Mukha smashed the great troops of Shaktis by pecking at them with its beak. Then the next general, Falamukha, took up a plowshare as his weapon. Riding on a heron resembling a mountain, he shone brilliantly in the battle. The leading Daitya named Vikarna, the extremely mighty general, rode on his vehicle, the Bhairunda bird, and fought a fierce battle. A fierce cock of extremely dreadful nature bore the general named Vikatanana, Vikatanana who had a lustrous sharp-edged spear for his weapon in the battle. Surveying the army of Shaktis from the front with blazing eyes and roaring loudly, the cock moved about making the hairs on its neck stand on their ends. The sixth general named Karalaksha was the atheist, atheist the sixth general named Karalaksha was the weightiest and the most conspicuous. His loud cry was as harsh as the sound of thunderbolt. He moved ahead with a ghost for his vehicle. He was intrepid due to his mastery of black magic practiced in cremating grounds. It was by repeating those mantras that the ghost was formerly subdued by him and brought under his control. In the battlefield, the ghost carried him on his back when goblins pervaded him. The ghost had long arms. He kept his head bent down and the feet were kept wide apart. Assuming the form of a vehicle, the ghost bore Karalaksha. Another commander was Karataka by name. He was the crest jewel of the army of Daityas. He pound he pounded and smashed the army of Shaktis with a Vitala vampire for his vehicle. The vampire had cruel, ruthless eyes with a body, a Yojana tall. This vampire was subdued by him and brought under his control by means of mantras in the cremation ground. Directed by Daitya, the vampire pounded and smashed the army of Shaktis. Sitting on the soldiers of that excellent vampire, the Dhanava fought with Shaktis in various ways. Thus, these seven evil-souled Hafti Dhanavas, comparable to the seven oceans, harassed and tormented the soldiers of Shaktis there. 
formerly these seven daityas had propitiated the sun god by means of penance boon had been granted to them by the sun god who had been pleased with their penance o sons of kikasha o fortunate ones i am delighted now by your penance welfare unto you all choose your boon when the sun god said thus the sons of kikasha who had become emaciated due to penance earnestly requested for an intractable boon like this o tapana sun god you must be present in the cavities of our eyes during fights with your intense heat and refulgence you must burn our antagonists o lord whenever you are present within our eyes let everything that becomes the object of our vision be motionless viewed by our eyes invigorated by your presence the soldiers of our antagonists will become incapable of wielding their weapons when the weapons are made motionless and blocked o lord by your vision alone our immobilized enemies can be killed with great facility this was the boon that they acquired formerly from the sun god with this boon granted to them the sons of kikasha moved about in the battle in that battlefield with great haftiness looked at by them when eyes had been penetrated and occupied by the sun god the innumerable weapons of shaktis became immobilized and they found their zeal in war futile when the missiles and weapons were blocked and immobilized by those seven sons of kikasha of great inherent strength shaktis could not exert themselves even when they exerted themselves they were over overcome much by the immobilization of their weapons so shaktis heaved a deep sigh and sat quiet thereupon finding a suitable opportunity the daityas who were directed by their masters rose up with different kinds of weapons and smashed the army of shaktis those shaktis who were deprived of their activity and who were prevented from using their weapons became perplexed and agitated on account of their arrows that could pierce even adamantine coats of mail the shaktis whose bodies had been wounded and pierced by the numerous weapons of daityas in the battlefield appeared like the creepers of kankola with plenty of good sprouts all those shaktis whose weapons were immobilized by them shrieked and wailed crying piteously they resorted to goddess lalita then at the bidding of the goddess the deity tiraskaranika magical veil the body guard of dandanatha rose up in the arena of the battle that mahamaya great deity of magical powers got into an aerial chariot named tamolipta with doors all round and assured shaktis about freedom from fear the deity was dark complexioned like tamala tree she wore a dark colored bodice or armor she was seated in the aerial chariot tamolipta of dark color yoked with dark colored horses she took up a twanging bow named vasanti mohana after roaring like a lion she showered arrows furious like serpents the daityas were unable to bear the arrows that had the form and features of black serpents that resembled iron clubs at their lower ends and that 
charged with the missile Mohana, the wicked ones, the chief, the chief of whom was Balahaka, were being smashed and pounded by the arrows of Mahamaya here and there. They then became extremely furious. Thereafter, at the bidding of Dandanatha, the deity mother, Tiraskarini discharged the great missile named Andha, blinding one, amidst the group of enemies. Those seven daityas, beginning with Balahaka, who had been hafti on account of boon granted by the sun god, were wounded by the missile Andha, and their eyes were covered as if with piece of cloth. Their eyes were afflicted by the blinding arrows that were discharged from the bow Mahamohana of the goddess Tiraskaranika. All those seven became blinded. They did not look at anything. In the absence of that vision, the immobilization of weapons came to an end. Once again, those Shaktis raised weapons in their hands, roaring like lions. With a desire to kill Daityas, they made preparations for the battle. They kept the deity Tiraskaranika of great might in front of them. Due to use of that good effective means, they became extremely delighted and fought. O Mother Tiraskaranika, O Mother Tiraskaranika of exalted fortune, well done, well done. You have appropriately screened off these wicked souled enemies. You are the great medicinal herb for screening, blinding the eyes of the wicked. This troop of Daityas has been blinded by you. O Deity, this task of the Devas has been perfectly carried out by you, since you have brought a disaster among these Daityas who cannot be conquered by us. Therefore, on hearing that it was by you alone that these seven great Asuras of wicked conduct have been killed, Lalita will derive great satisfaction. If this is done, the, the, the deity Dandini will become pleased. Mantrini, too, of exalted fortune, will surely get the greatest pleasure. Hence, you alone do kill the seven Daityas in the arena of battle. Raising up our weapons, we shall destroy the entire army of these Daityas. On being told thus and encouraged by those Shaktis, on account of their zeal for war, the deity Tiraskaranika proceeded towards the army of Balahaka by means of the vehicle Tamolipta. On seeing her advancing, those seven base Asuras immediately remembered the boon granted by the sun god. Although the splendor of the sun entered their eyes, that destructive power within the eyes was overcome when the eyes had been covered by the prowess of Tiraskaranika. The great Asura, Balahaka, had formerly been blind due to his pride on being granted the boons as well as on account of his power of weapons. He was blind due to anger also. Now he literally became blind on account of the missile of the deity. Therefore the deity Antardhidevata, Antardhidevata, that is Tiraskaranika, dragged him by his hairs and cut off and cut him off by means of her sword. After cutting off with an arrow the head of his vehicle vulture, the deity Tiraskaranika proceeded towards Suchi Mukha. After cutting off his hard head with a blow of her sharp-edged spear, she gradually killed the other five Daityas too. The deity Antardhi Devata made a garland with the seven uh, severed heads of the Daityas by joining one another by means of their 
own tresses. Wearing that garland round her neck, she roared loudly. In the height of the, their fury, Shaktis killed their army wholly and made many rivers of their blood flow. What was done by Mother Mahamaya was the greatest miracle there due to the glorious act of covering up the eyes of generals beginning with Balahaka. A few who survived the killing became utterly confused and frightened in their extreme agony. They sought shelter in the Lord of Shunyaka, who himself was crying. Those Daityas who survived began to praise Dandini and Mahamaya again and again. They were pleased because they were able to receive the graceful blessing glance from her. The Shaktis who were there shook their heads in approbation saying, Well done, well done. At every step they praised the deity Tiraskaranika. <laughs>